Hey, what's up, guys? It's ParnellyX, and we're playing Warwick Mid today after not posting any videos for the last couple months. So, apologies for that. But uh, I've been kind of playing a little bit better lately, and I have a new build that I want to show you guys that I've um, been liking ever since the item buffs that happened like a patch or two ago. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. So, right now, I, I gotta kind of focus on this lane matchup, though. This is not an easy matchup. It's versus Kennen, who's. Makes any lane in a way. So normally against a lot of these range matches in the mid lane, the reason why War War mid is so good is I can usually just kind of ignore the poke that uh, champions are dishing out. But for Kennen, that's like kind of the case to an extent, but it's hard to ever like really retaliate unless he like does something like that. Kind of ease into me. There's no point in him taking damage. Also, if he knights me when I'm that low, it's just not going to work out, but it's whatever. We'll just... That's always a really good sign, by the way. That's a huge win. Whenever you can bait out the ignite from the enemy laner early on, huge win. Even if you have to use barrier. Uh, ignite is like the main form of kill pressure they have on you. Besides... Uh, ganks. We see that... We do see that Kha'Zix is here. Um. I'm gonna stand next to this guy in case Kalex jumps on him. Don't want him to get isolated. But you see, like, like you see my healing though. Like, come on, it's absurd. So what I can do to kill this cannon is I can flash auto Q. Actually, I might need two autos now. He's regened enough, so I might need a flash auto auto Q. That might be a bit tough. So what I might do is I might just like auto. We'll see what I do, actually. Let's do that. Fear. I feared I walked up, feared him, so I can I can throw in two autos. Got a fight down here too, so let's just go. Take it. Nice. Another free kill. So yeah, I feared that way I could I could get two autos in there. I don't know if I should take this crab, by the way. I'm just going to take it because it's kind of here. And then I'm going to recall. It might be a waste of time. It's whatever. It won't be that much of a waste of time at the end of the day. You can deal with it. Yeah, the fear allows me to, to get the two autos in and then Q. Although I did get stunned, so that was kind of awkward. Very awkward timing there forced me to flash out and I actually maybe could have died if I couldn't flash. The one thing I wanted to avoid was a uh, auto Q and then Kennen flashes and forces a one for one trade. That was my only concern really. But with the wave crash in the turret, it's still going to be a win if I get the kill. But that's a situation where like, sometimes taking a one-for-one -one trade is like, just a huge advantage, so you don't even have to worry about dying. You still want to like try to survive if you can, but you don't have to worry about dying, so you just go for the aggressive play regardless, because he's going to miss out on minions. Nice. Good stuff. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and ward over here. Okay. This is this right here is the Warwick mid experience. Not gonna lie, you get like stuff like this all the freaking time. You get like eight man's mid, level two or something. But you just kind of have to deal with it. That's literally part of the mid lane Warwick experience. And really, the key, honestly, to playing Warwick mid, maybe we'll see it this game is like you have to play like survival mode. You can't play like win the win the lane snowball hard. You can sometimes, but most of the time, like majority of the time, people are going to be trying to gank you like forever. They think Warwick mid, this man champion just needs to get ganked, ganked, ganked. So you're going to get like five man, 12 man ganked. ADC is going to roam level three or something. I swear to God. And if you just play to survive, you're going to be able to bait enemies into wasting their time, which is what the main goal is. One second. <sighs> All right, we're back. Okay. 
Okay, so got our ultimate here. We're rushing into Titanic Hydra in the mid lane. Why do we rush Titanic Hydra in the mid lane? Because we want wave clear. Allows you to push and roam. You have complete control over mid lane. And it also allows you to... Once you have Titanic, you actually can brass your mid lane opponent by just clearing the wave. Like literally just IOing the minions um, and, and hitting like the mid laner with the cleave damage just chunks them really hard, which, which is super sick. Also makes you tanky, right? You get you still get health out of it, so it's... It's just overall the best item for work mid lane in general. The only time that you'd go something like a Trinity Force or a Sunder rush mid, or maybe even a Boric, is if you're playing against like a melee champion. So in some, some sometimes in melee matchups, I will go Sheen item, but you can't ever really go wrong with Titanic Rush. Basically, what it comes down to. I am eating a lot of damage. This man has anti healing versus me, which is a bit annoying. Obviously an expected rush. Most people are going to rush anti-healing versus you. Kind of ro roaming down here because it looks like a fight's going to break out. But I think they should just avoid. Yeah, it looks like they're going to dive. Fuck. You know, I honestly probably should have just ulted. I was going to... I was wanting to chain cc this was my goal there i wanted to e but then like i just wasn't able to get my e off in time that's really what it kind of came down to there although to be fair to be fair like if i r and then i e like he's gonna get his ult off anyways so like i kind of just had to hope that he wasn't gonna react in time that, that was literally what it came down to i had to hope because my, my R isn't much of a longer duration than my E here anyways. So we, we put three points in Q. And then we're going to actually max out W now. This will give us roam power. And obviously, like, because the enemy um, mid laners are almost always going to be able to anti-healing versus you. We're heading up. Because everyone's going to be building anti-healing versus you. Um... Uh, Ma putting more points in the queue usually isn't really worthwhile. Kind of the idea. Nice. I don't need R. I can chase him down. What the hell is this minion block, though? Jesus. That is crazy. There you go. That's good stuff. Um, I might just go ahead and recall here. Put down a ward. For my mouth fight. Get a recall because I can get my item. I'm gonna miss this wave anyways. Like it's already gonna take a while to walk from top lane to mid lane here, so I might as well just get my item in the process. And just come back while I'm strong. But yeah, like I said, three points in the queue into W max. If you are playing for lane, if you're playing a lot more for lane and you're just trying to bully your lane opponents or absorb a lot of gank pressure, you can actually max out E seconds. It just kind of depends on the situation, but versus Kennen, I can't really like dominate him in lane very hard because it's Kennen. So I'm going to play a little bit more for roaming if I can. I mean, it doesn't mean I have to like, I can't trade with him and stuff and play for lane at all. I, I still actually usually play for lane a decent amount, but I like to have the ability to roam. Although the one thing, one thing worth keeping in mind is the fact that you're W, of course, is situational roaming power. You can't just always run bot lane super fast. It's only if they're low. Because Kha'Zix took this Rift Herald, I think that Kha'Zix is here. Just with the way this Kin's playing, and like he suddenly just stopped pushing the wave all of a sudden. That seems like bait. So we're just gonna just give up a couple minions. Just make sure you get the XP and you're, and you're good. Minion XP is super valuable. But the build, the, by the way, the build I'm going right now, guys, is something you can go in top lane. But in top lane, I'm usually going to go Titanic Hydra second. We're going Titanic Hydra into Trinity Force. It's a new build. An ally has been you can still go Divine. Divine's still fine, but because people are building anti-healing versus you a lot, the extra healing power, which is the main advantage of Divine, isn't as strong. 
And Trinity Force got buffed, so it's actually a useful item now, which is huge. Like that Trinity Force is an item that's supposed to be amazing on Warwick, but it's always been kind of trashed just because the item's underpowered. But now it's not underpowered. It's actually good. So we take those. Oh my god. Holy moly. I got this man, I think, did he flash in front of me there? To block my ult? Kind of a legend, that one. Um, boots. We kind of aim for defensive boots most of the time here, I'd say. Defensive boots are, are the way to go. I used to love CDR boots, but I, I realized that I was actually losing more by building CDR boots. They, they feel better, but I don't know. I think defensive boots are just really good value. I still go CDR boots sometimes if like if the if it's just not very strong. But they got two heavy auto attackers in Jace and Zaya here. A little bit of extra armor helps against Kha'Zix as well. But you don't really, to be all, all in fairness, um, you don't really build Played steel caps for the armor because the armor is literally 300 gold worth of armor, so it's not really useful. You build it for the like the auto attack defenses. So if they have like if they don't have any auto attackers, then you wouldn't you would just probably opt to not go for played steel caps this game. This man's very dead. While they're chasing this man, I'm gonna go ahead and just try to. Got the wave. That way we can get mid prio. Oh, this oh what what a beautiful what a beautiful combo there. Awesome. I literally I this blitz drink literally hooked me out of the fight. Because <laughs> I can key follow that. Exactly what I want to see. Thank you, my good man. Do that. Oh. Very dead. Can't follow that up. Sadly, I wasn't able to get many plates. Nor normally with work mid, I'm actually getting like lots of plates in mid lane. But against Ken some matchups like Kennen, it's just hard. Never really gets to the point where I'm trading with them super hard. Do not know what my team is doing here. We have a Master E player, which we never really expect anything from. Swear to God that Master E is actually just really overpowered of a champion. But because the Master E players just suck, it just. Makes him look really balanced. I mean, that guy, one guy in EU, a Scenarius, whatever, he, he he got rank one on Mastery, and that's because he's actually good. He knows how to play the champion, and he knows how to play the game, basically. There's like some champions in the game that I feel like they're like so strong that, and and they're, they're so strong in just in very odd ways that people who like play the meta don't know how to like capitalize on their weird OP-ness, and then and the one trick just don't know how to play the game in general. So you never like get to see the champion's true potential. I feel that way with Master G. Ah. Uh, couldn't get the Q follow in there actually. So um, with uh with Warwick, if you try to hold Q like right after you get CC'd, you're not gonna Q follow. It's it's just a really jank interaction. I don't know why it works that way, but that's like one thing that needs to get changed, because after the CC's done, I should be allowed to Q follow, right? Nope. Literally doesn't work that way.
I don't even know the exact timing. It's like half a, you have to like wait like half a second. Like I know the timing, like just based off of feel where you can Q follow again, where you can hold Q and you can actually go through. But I think, I think it's like half a second. Well, we are. Okay, nice. That's actually very, very big. Very, very big. Wait, this is huge. Master, you just cleans. Unless he's, unless he's terrible. Okay. okay I'm kind of glad that Kalix didn't run up. He th probably thought I had ultimate. So he wanted to disengage that, which, yeah, if I had ultimate, I'd kill him there, but I didn't, so. Shoot that. Gotta kill this man. Ah, uh, of course. Of course I is there. Why not? Alright, Trinity Force. That is what we're going this game. Trinity Force. Can't buy it straight up, so let's get our boots. Yeah, so the, the Trinity Force is just such a so much better of an item than it used to be. It got like a bunch of stat buffs. I think it's got like plus 580, plus 5 attack speed, maybe like plus 50 health or something. It's got some really nice stat buffs. The passive doesn't fall off as quickly, which is very huge for a champion like Warwick, actually. That's actually like super impactful. That was a problem. I, I never thought of that being a problem, but it really was a problem. Because um, it was hard to like maintain the stacks on, on Warwick. If you just got CC'd even a little bit. Or if they had a movement speed bonus. And then on top of that, this item is now like not complete ter completely terrible. Hearth hearth uh, Hearthbound Axe. Builds out a two longsword. Longsword's now and has more AD. So it's actually gold efficient. When it used to be just awful. Nice. Nice. Okay, so I just got a bunch of kills there. I'm really, really strong. We're maxing out uh, the rest of Q right now. You could also just do three points Q and then like put points into E after you max out W or like I said you can max out E second and then go W seconds doesn't really matter actually what you do on this champion like all of your abilities just are like situationally good so you just kind of got to kind of read the situation I mean Q is the one thing that's not really situationally good it's always good but putting extra points into it isn't as strong so it's more consistent but it's less like it's less good sometimes. So that's that that really is the thing about Q. And that's why I usually don't like to max it out first all the way. But it really does not matter what you max in the champion at all. Like you can max hell, you can just have one point in Q and max W first or E lap E first or it doesn't really matter. Just like I said, it just kinda of depends. If you're playing against an assassin, you can max out E straight straight up. I would still recommend you just do Three points W into Emax, but just pointing out it's not a not a huge deal. Okay. I don't know what happened, but we just killed everything. I guess Malphite is just a absolute beast behemoth. This dude's eight and one in Malphite. I feel like every time I see Malphite in my team, they go like 0-6. So even though this champion's good, like just 
It just doesn't really matter because of how much feeding goes on in the laning phase. But an 8 and 1 Malphite is. is gonna kinda just. fuck shit up. Nice. Got Baron. Yeah, let's go push out top lane in the meantime. So our second item, you might be wondering, what is our next item in this build? We're going to be going, most of the time we're going to be going Sterix Gauge now. Sterix Gauge is buffed. It's it's back to being useful like it was back in the good old days of season 10, season 9. It's literally the same item as it was before. So it's it's solid. It's it's not amazing, but it's it's pretty good. You can also go Hullbreaker as well. I think you can go either Hullbreaker here or you can go Sterix, but... It just kind of depends on if you feel like split pushing or grouping. And most of the time, I would say you'd rather group. Most of the time. Most of the time. But it completely depends. And Hallbreaker also got buffed. So that's why I also rec recommend this too. Like this, I this item actually got mega buffed. So th this item is actually insane. Like e even, even if you're not in a team fight, it's still a good item now, which is crazy. But I'd say Sterix is... Still really good. Can't run away from me here. Just running around killing everything. Wait, we can actually just end the game here. Can we not? Hello? They just killed like two very important people. They still have Zaya, but I really do. I think we just win here. I gotta I gotta be here though. I gotta be here though for us to win. By the laser. Trying to hit minions to survive, and we just we end the game. There you go, boom. I never really got to my sterics, but that's That's fine. We don't really need to. I mean this build, honestly, at the end of the day, there's not like one power spike you're playing for. This build is literally just good like the entirety of the game. So just a kind of an, an FYI here. Yeah, that is the Warwick mid lane. On the current patch, which I actually don't know what the current patch is called. But like I said, this build works in top lane as well. Just go Triforce Rush in top lane rather than Hydra. That's really what it comes down to. Go Triforce, then Hydra. Mid lane, go Hydra, then Triforce. And you're going to be chilling. So, GG's. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.